What's up? It's your boy, Coach K, on this beautiful Friday. And today we're going to be going over a practice question about SCI findings. If you need more practice questions like this, more content review, what I want you to do, go ahead and like this video right now, subscribe to the channel for more, and let's get it. <laughs> What's up, baby? All right, we back in here. Let's go ahead and knock this question down. It says, Vidi is performing a chart review of his patient who has a T1 Asia B SCI. Which of the following findings is the most likely when treating this patient? So we have A, paradoxical breathing pattern. B is use of a mechanical ventilator. C, moderate to maximal assistance with wheelchair to bed transfers and D is household and community ambulator with HK foes and crutches. Let's go people. Go ahead and put it down in your comment box right now. What is your answer here? What do you believe to be true? Because this is an area right here. You need to be confident about when you walk into the MPTE spinal cord injuries. We're going to break it down piece by piece. Vidi is performing a chart review of his patient who has a T1 Asia B SCI. All right. It gave us the neurological level of injury, which is T1. Asia B, if you're not familiar with the Asia scale, definitely take a look at that. Asia is graded A, B, C, D, and E. And Asia B means that the motor function below the level of injury is going to be non-existent, all right? So that means all the muscles below the level of T1 are not working, all right? So that's what we know about this current situation right now. Patient has a T1 Asia B SCI. It says, which of the following findings is the most likely when treating this patient? At the end of the day, they're really just asking us, hey, if you got this patient that comes in with this type of spinal cord injury, what do you expect to find? That's it, all right? So Go ahead, lock in your answer right now. We're going to roll through these answer choices, ruling in and out. Does that sound good to you? Let's knock it out. A says paradoxical breathing pattern. Would we expect to see this with a T1 Asia B SCI? You know, I kind of like this answer right here. You want to know why? Because there's this thing called paradoxical breathing pattern that happens with patients with spinal cord injury. Now, hold on a minute. You know that when you breathe in, right, when you inspire, your chest should rise, right? Your chest should rise like that. Okay, that's normal. Paradoxical breathing pattern is when your chest actually falls inward when you breathe in. That's why they call it a paradoxical breathing pattern. It's a type of paradoxical breathing pattern. So here's the thing, y'all, that's very important here. I would expect to see a paradoxical breathing pattern with a T1 Asia A and or Asia B. And the reason why is because the diaphragm is still functional, it still works, but muscles like your external intercostals that help to raise the ribs, they don't work anymore. And so as soon as your diaphragm contracts and it flattens out, it causes a negative pressure inside the chest and causes the chest wall to fall inward. That's called a paradoxical breathing pattern, and it is something that you see with a lower cervical or upper thoracic spinal cord injury. Let me say that again. Paradoxical breathing pattern is something that you see with a lower cervical or upper thoracic spinal cord injury. I like this. I'm going to put a check mark next to it for now. Let's take a look at B. B says the use of a mechanical ventilator. You know, I don't like this answer because really, if we think about the diaphragm, it's innervated by what? C3, C4, C5. The diaphragm's alive. Now, here's the thing. This patient has an upper thoracic problem. Do we expect that they're going to have difficulty doing like that inspiration? No, because they have the diaphragm there. So I'm going to say it's not likely I'll see the use of a mechanical ventilator. If it's at C4, then I'd be like, all right, I can see it. C3, all right, I can see it. But a T1, not likely. Let's take a look at C. C says moderate to maximal assistance with a wheelchair to bed transfers. Okay, so here's the thing. If a patient 
actually has, let's say, a C7, right? They got tricep action. They could use their triceps. Those are people that can literally do a wheelchair to bed transfer as a like a popover transfer, like not even using a slide board. And they do it independently. So thinking about a T1, this patient has triceps. They got grip strength. They got full upper extremity strength for the most part. So they're definitely going to be able to do more of like an independent transfer from the wheelchair to the bed. And so I'm going to go ahead and put an X next to this one because I don't expect to see that. Let's look at D. D says household and community ambulator with HKFOs, hip, knee, ankle, foot orthoses, and crutches. You know what? I don't like this one either. Because it's highly unlikely that a patient with a T1 Asia A is going to be navigating the community with HKFOs. It's just not an efficient, effective means of transfer for that patient or mobility for that patient. So I'm going to say... This isn't right because it's highly unlikely that this patient will be in the community ambulating with HK folks. They just don't have the trunk control for that. All right. And then obviously they don't have any lower extremity strength either. So what does that leave us with? It leaves us with a paradoxical breathing pattern. Don't worry. I'm going to recap on that here in a moment. But congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. This is a tough question. It was all about understanding asia b what that means okay remember if it's asia b that means there's no motor function preserved below the level of the injury we know what the level of injury is it's t1 all right now here's the thing i talked to you about normal breathing right if you inspire inhale your chest should do what it should rise okay well paradoxical breathing pattern is where the chest actually falls inward when you inspire or when you inhale. Why would we see something like that? Well, we see it when a patient has diaphragm function, so the diaphragm still works, but muscles like the external intercostals that help to raise the ribs, those muscles don't work. And so what happens? The diaphragm does its thing. It flattens out. The pressure in the chest goes negative. And the chest wall falls inward. Why? Because those muscles, like the external intercostals, aren't there to rise it. They're not there to raise those ribs. All right? And so that leaves us, again, with paradoxical breathing pattern. Congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. This is a tough area. Now, like I told you, if you're studying for the MPTE, this is an area I want you to go into and make sure you truly understand this stuff. If you're having difficulty retaining information like this, I got something special for you. Next week on Monday, I'm going in my private Facebook group. It's free. I'm going in there live to teach the students about how to retain 90 plus percent of what they read or hear. All right. Check us out at www.mptegroup.com. We can't wait to see you in there and I can't wait to see you next week. Have a good one.